With 4.4 inch Henu Vale having been released, I'm sure we all expected some lore to come our way, and to be fair, I'm happy to report, they delivered. Uh, we got information ranging from what Chen Yu Vale looked like before Morax arrived, more details on the Archon War, Paimon acting extremely sus about Seelies, Chong Shen's true identity, and hell, even some information on Alice if you can believe it. But regardless, before we dissect everything we just talked about, it's important to recap the main story so we're all on the same page. That and I've learned, I've, I've come to learn a lot of people are either illiterates or just, just, just really like skipping dialogues. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, to, to recap, when we first attempt to enter Chen Yu Vale, you actually don't enter Chen Yu Vale, but rather get kidnapped into a realm where you encounter a maiden calling herself Fu Jin. She tells us she's an adept and would like our help in restoring the nature of Chen Yu Valley, as the soil and water have been worsening, threatening the nearby village. There's also something about tea, that the tea tastes bad, I don't know, the nigga just drinks some water! Uh, I like to call water, you know, God's nectar unto this earth, but, you know, to each their own. Before we leave the realm, she imbues us with some adeptal powers, allowing us to traverse the realm more easily. Eventually, we make our way into the village where an old man tells us that Xiao Ying village was once nothing but a barren hill filled with demons, before Adeptus Fujin arrived onto the scene, vanquished the demons, and then planted the tea trees, which then allowed humans to come and move into the area. After meeting with the village chief, who said not a Damn thing of worth, we prepare to head on out to Yilong Wharf, but before we get there, we run into Fujin once again, where she informs us the danger posed to Chiaoying Village by the declining soil and water isn't a, a physical one, and assures us that if an actual disaster were to befall the village, the Lord of Geo would step in. Huh, interesting person to place your faith in. I, I guess she's not caught up with the times. Let me remind you all what Zhang Li would do if this village was facing some sort of catastrophe, huh? Even without a god above, this remains a nation of men. I was once their god. I ought to be here to witness their rise and fall. He'd sit there and watch that bitch burn to the ground! Moving on, she tells us that to restore nature, we must do some ancient ritual that involved, like, throwing a rock into the water or some shit? I don't know. After making our way onto the wharf, we run into Little Mao and a string of letters I, I dare not try and pronounce. Hatimongongi. We venture into the mountains with Little Mao, where we come across some ancient murals, and Mao informs us that these people predate Morax's arrival in Chen Yu Valley. Back in those days, people would chuck pieces of jade into the river and wait for him to sink to the bottom in order to prevent the river from flooding and obtain fertile soil. Little Mao then gives us some lore on the Archon War, funnily enough. He tells us that Chen Yu Valley once had tattoo-clad soldiers who were over 10 feet tall, whereas Li Wei had the Mililith, who wore heavy armor weighing thousands of pounds and were led by Rex Lapis. The Archon War was so brutal, it caused the Bishui River to run red. Later on, when we make our way to a giant piece of jade in the river called Jade Mouth, we learn that it was formed during the Archon War and came about when an evil god attempted to redirect the river to flood the Mililith who were stationed nearby. Two of her subordinates, however, a white snake and a giant's carp, disobeyed her orders and chose to fight the evil god instead. While the snake battled the god, the giant carp casted down the giant piece of jade to block the river, permanently putting an end to the flooding in the area. While sounding good on paper, this led to the unfortunate side effect of the river no longer being able to provide irrigation, effectively stopping all crops from forming. Mao once again reiterates that there were other gods and adepti that existed in Chenyu Valley before Morax who protected the people. We meet Funjin yet again who tells us a bit about the adepti, telling us it's merely a title and that no one is born an adeptus, nor is one an adeptus forever. She also tells us that once, long ago, the people of Chenyu Valley lost their ability to communicate with the heavens following, quote, great changes in the geology. It was then the people switched to, to the old throw the rock in the river method <laughs> before this practice was later stopped, following the war to become gods who would reign over this world began. As we attempt to collect scattered pieces of adeptal energy, Paimon begins acting rather suspect when the topic of Seelies are brought up.
Nothing more ever comes of this, and it's tough to discern her tone given it's not voiced, but I did want to bring this up nonetheless. After collecting all the scattered energy, we get our hands on a jade called the Votive Rain Jade, which was just the last jade that was ever tossed into the river before the start of the Archon War, and it's the one we're going to use for our ritual, so ain't that swell. <laughs> Once we reach the surface, we run into a giant chicken who also wants to restore nature and speaks in riddles before finally telling us she likes how the new tea tastes with the dirty water and soil, saying it reminds her of the old times. Later on, we find another mural which details an emissary of the gods leading people to a giant jade in the sky so as to let them talk to the adepti and gods in the heavens. But of course, this all ended with the change in geology thing leading to the whole rock and water <laughs> Later on, Little Mao would say something very interesting. He'd state he has a bigger sister who isn't related to him by blood, but was just a lady who stayed in Chenyu Valley for a while, exploring the mountains and ruins with Little Mao, telling him the one they are standing in right now was his Rubicon. Keep in mind, the only person to ever use this oddly specific word in all of Tivat is Alice, who at some point in her adventures most likely winded up in Chenyu Valley. Mao then tells us she's probably off adventuring somewhere else right now. After running into Fujin once more, we learn she was the one holding the jade in the mural from earlier. Fujin later tells us she isn't a true adeptus in the same sense as Mountain Carver or Cloud Retainer and is weaker by comparison. She then tells us that what's happening with Chenyu Vale's water and soil is simply nature being nature and following the flow of time. However, they must combat this natural order lest the people suffer. Fujin then tries to do the ritual but is too weak. Later on, we run into another mural with a piece missing wherein Fujin tells us the place we are in right now were once shelters that were built to help the people of Chenyu Vale seek refuge for the Archon War. Fujin then tells us that she, a white snake with red eyes called Herb Lord, and the giant chicken from earlier were all once friends. Fuji as a golden carp and Herb Lord were worshipped as a depth eye, and the chicken was seen as the mountain master. Later, Fujin and Herb Lord defected against the evil god, causing strife between the three of them, which she surmises must be why the mural is broken. Later, over some tea, Fujin tells us of a time before the Archon War, during which she would meet with the other Adepti, who were far smarter than her, and tells us the evil god she once served wasn't exactly evil. She was once a kind god who made many dreams come true for the people of Chenyu Valley, but went mad in pursuit of the throne during the Archon War. Sadly, for her, she wasn't uh, strong enough to defeat Morax, so in a last-ditch effort, she chose to flood the river, hoping to destroy everything downstream, even if it meant Chenyu Valley would also pay the price. As such, Fujin and Herb Lord chose to stop this, and even the giant chicken was hurting people to safety. As we move on to do the ritual, we run into the giant chicken again, and <laughs> to, to the surprise of no one, she is the source of the bad soil and water in Chenyu Valley, and is seeking to control the mountaintops in hopes of completely altering the land below, restoring nature. Get it? Restoring nature to the to the old nature that's bad for humanity? Yeah, it's uh... It's all a metaphor, these guys are smart over there, me yo. After fighting and defeating the giant chicken, we talk with her for what feels like nine hours and learn at one point Herb Lord eventually changed forms into a human and devoted herself to practicing medicine and healing the sick after moving to Liyue Harbor. Fujin then performs the ceremony, but having exhausted so much power, reverted to her carp form and leaves to rest. So that's the whole quest. I kept emphasizing the change in geology but a lot just because in a different quest we run into another mural and see that it's this. That's right, the change in geology was caused by the divine nail that was sent at the chasm. Oh, don't you, don't you just love it when things make sense? Also, Herb Lord, I'm pretty sure is Chong Shen, but I don't know. The only thing I couldn't make sense of that was Chong Shen turning into a human at one point, and we somehow never found that out. I don't know. Maybe it's like a relative thing, who knows? 